an isomorphism from a group G to a group H is, we understand now, a one-to-one -one correspondence of the elements of G and H, a function which is a bijection from the elements of G to the elements of H, but that that function also needs to have the homomorphism property so that it respects the operations in those two groups, namely that it associates to a product of elements in G an associated product of elements in H. Now that we've seen the definition, in this video I just want to look at a couple of examples of homomorphisms between two groups that highlight that the differences between those two groups are in fact superficial and that their underlying structure from an abstract algebra standpoint is the same. So what's some low-hanging fruit examples? One example is if I have any group G, any group at all, finite, not finite, cyclic, not cyclic, abelian, not abelian, who cares, any group G, the identity function so the function g, uh, the phi of x is equal to x, right? The function that just associates to every element that very same element within the same group. That identity function is an isomorphism. Why? Almost seems like a silly question, but let's go through the proof. First of all, why is phi a one-to-one -one correspondence? It's one-to-one, -one, first of all, because if phi of g is equal to phi of h, we need to be able to conclude that g is equal to h. But by definition of phi, phi of g is exactly equal to g, phi of h is exactly equal to h, and therefore, when we assume that phi sends g and h to the same element, we can deduce that the original elements must have been the same. So, it's a one-to-one -one function. Why is it an onto function? Why is it true that for any element h in my group g, there exists a g such that h is equal to phi of g? Well, phi of g is exactly equal to g itself. So this is asking the question, how do I know, given any h in my group g, that there is a g to which h is equal? Well, all I have to do is take g equal to h, and my identity function doesn't do anything to that g, and therefore it carries it on to g, which is the same as h. So the identity function is both one-to-one -one and onto. We could have proven that in an elementary class in set theory or introduction to proofs or whatever. That's not abstract algebra. What is abstract algebra? is to verify the homomorphism property, the respect that this function has for the operation in the group G. Our burden of proof is to show that for any elements A and B in the group G, that phi of A times B is equal to phi of A times phi of B. But, on the one hand, the identity function just carries A times B onto itself, A times B. That's what the identity function does. But then, for the same reason, A is equal to phi of A, and B is equal to phi of B, and therefore, a times b is equal to phi of a times phi of b. But then we've proven, therefore, that phi of a times b is equal to phi of a times phi of b. So the identity function is not only a bijection on the elements of a group G to itself, but it also has the homomorphism property. And therefore, the identity function on a group is an isomorphism. Therefore, every group is the same as itself. Which doesn't come as much of a surprise, hopefully, but one of the interesting parts is that the identity function is not necessarily the only isomorphism from a group to itself. There may be other ways of associating to a group's elements other elements of that very same group that have identical properties. So a group can be the same as itself in multiple different ways. And the set of different ways in which it may do so is called the automorphism group of G, which is something that we're going to meet a few videos from now. So let's move off of this very general and probably not that surprising result, and look at a more concrete example. Let's take the group Z5 and the group Z5 again. Right? So I want to show that this group is the same as itself, but I want to do so by coming up with an example of an isomorphism that's not the identity function. What I want to show you is that the function phi of x is equal to 2x mod 5, the doubling function on Z mod 5, is actually an isomorphism from this group to itself. So the first of all, let's visualize why it's a bijection. So this function is going to associate 0 to 0. It's going to associate 2 to 4. It's going to associate 1 to 2, just by doubling. It's going to associate 3 to 3 times 2, which is 6. But 6 is the same as 1 mod 5. It's congruent to 1. And then 4 times 2 is 8, which is congruent to 3 mod 5. So just the hunters and arrows diagram for this function shows that, in fact, it is a 1 to 1 correspondence. We could also prove it more concretely uh, using the definitions of one-to-one -one and onto. 
So why is it true that if phi of x is equal to 5y, so if phi, my function, sends two elements to the same place, that those elements must have been the same element in the first place? This is my burden of proof to show that this function is 1 to 1. Well, phi of x equals to 5y means that 2x and 2y must be congruent, mod 5. And we know we can subtract and factor so that we're getting the congruence twice the quantity x minus y is congruent to 0 mod 5. In other words, 2 times the quantity x minus y is a multiple of 5. But because 5 and 2 are relatively prime, if 2 times something is a multiple of 5, that must mean that that something must have been a multiple of 5. x minus y must have been congruent to 0 by itself mod 5. Because there's no way to make 2 times something into a multiple of 5 unless that something was already a multiple of 5. Just because 2 can't help whether something is a multiple of 5 or not, because it's relatively prime to 5. And therefore, x must have been equal to y in this group. And now that I know that this function is 1 to 1, we also have this wonderful result from general set theory that says that any function from a finite set to another finite set is 1 to 1 if and only if it's onto. This is great. So anytime we're comparing two finite sets, or in our class, finite groups, all I have to do is verify that a function is one to one to then also guarantee that it's onto. So you can check whichever one of those two happens to be easier. The other one will be automatic by this theorem from set theory. So since we verified that this function is one to one and my groups are finite, that guarantees this function is also onto. So phi is definitely a one to one correspondence of the elements of these groups. But we also need to know that it respects the operation of this group. Why is it a homomorphism? My burden of proof is to show that for any a and b, phi of the product is equal to the product of the phi's. Why is that true? Let's keep in mind here, let's be very careful, because the operation in this group, in both cases, g and h, is the operation addition mod phi. And in this product rule equation that characterizes the homomorphism property, the a and b are in the first case being combined together by the operation in the domain group, this addition mod 5, and in the second case are being connected by the operation from the second group, this addition mod 5. Just want to be extra careful about that because there are cases in which those operations can differ and we might miss the point if we don't remind ourselves of that fact. All right, so why is this thing true? Well, if I first add, in other words, use this operation to combine two elements in the domain, a plus b, and then I apply the function phi, the result is going to be twice the quantity a plus b. But we know that even mod 5, the distributive property of multiplication over addition, will hold. And therefore, this is equal to 2a plus 2b. But on the other hand, 2a is the same thing as phi of a. 2b is the same thing as phi of b. Again, all these things understood mod 5. And therefore, that's equal to phi of a plus phi of b. And so this function is not just a bijection. It also has the homomorphism property, and therefore is an isomorphism from z5 to z5. And it's an example of an isomorphism from a group to itself that is not the identity function. To close up this video of examples, let's also look at an example between two groups that do on their face look different. The group A3 of even permutations of three elements, and the group Z3 of additive residues mod 3. These look very different, but we want to show that there's an isomorphism that actually indicates that their structure is the same. And the operations in these two groups, remember, are also very different. The operation in this group is the composition of permutations. The operation in this group is addition mod 3. So why should these two groups be isomorphic? Well, what we might do is just try associating to the identity element in one of my groups, the identity element in the other. That's pretty important for uh, an isomorphism, as we'll see in another video or two from now. And then let's also make some other arbitrary choice. Let's say I associate 1, 2, 3, so this even permutation, with the number 1 in z mod 3. And therefore, if I want a bijection, I have to associate the last element to the other element that I haven't associated over here. So 1, 3, 2 associates to 2. So I might write out this function just by spelling out what it does to each of the three elements of a3. So it's clearly a bijection, because I can write down all three elements of both groups and see that this relates exactly one of them to exactly one of the others. So the bijection part is not a challenge. The challenge for us is to justify why this function has the homomorphism property. Why does it send a product of elements in A3 to the associated product of elements in Z3? Well, the way to make that observation that will actually give us a little bit more mileage later on is to remember that 
1, 2, 3 to the first power is equal to itself. But when I compose it with itself once and get the second power, 1, 2, 3 composed with itself twice is actually 1, 3, 2. And if I compose this 3 cycle with itself again to get the third power of it, it actually wraps back around to the identity. 1, 2, 3 to the power 0 is the same as 1, 2, 3 to the power 3. And so all the elements in the group on the left here, all the elements of A3, are powers of the element 1, 2, 3. Let's rewrite my function by making use of that fact. 5, 1, 2, 3 to the power 0 is the same as 5 of the identity. 1, 2, 3 to the 1, 1, 2, 3 to the 2. And what we can see now down here is that there's a pattern that it associates to a given power of 1, 2, 3, the exponent from that power in Z mod 3. And so we have now kind of a general formula for what this function is doing. It's associating to the xth power of the element 1, 2, 3, the number x, mod 3, of course. So now how do we verify that this has the homomorphism property? Well, let's try composing together two elements that have the form 1, 2, 3 to the x, composed with 1, 2, 3 to the y in the group A3. We know all the elements in this group can be written as a power of 1, 2, 3, so we lose no generality in writing it in this fashion. We could say, for all A and B in my group, A is equal to 1, 2, 3 to the x for some x, uh, B is equal to 1, 2, 3 to the y for some y. But what happens when I compose two powers of the same element with one another? Well, those powers are just going to add. That's the exponent property that works in any group at all. So what I get is 1, 2, 3 to the power x plus y. But what's the job of phi? The job of phi is to extract the exponent out of this. So phi of 1, 2, 3 to the power x plus y is the number x plus y. Again, we can construe this to be mod 3, but it turns out really not to matter because we can assume without loss of generality that x and y are either 0, 1, or 2. So that sum will never be bigger than 3 in the first place. I suppose it could be 2 plus 2, in which case we do have to read this mod 3. But anyway, again by definition of phi, x is the same thing as phi of the xth power of 1, 2, 3. y is the same thing as the phi of the yth power of 1, 2, 3. And reading this from beginning to end, I find out that phi of the product, using the product of A3, is the same as the product of the phi's using the operation of Z mod 3, which is addition mod 3. And that verifies that, in fact, this function has the homomorphism property as well. Since it's bijection and has the homomorphism property, this function phi is an isomorphism between A3 and Z3. So A3 and Z3 are isomorphic groups. Even though their elements look different, their operation is a very different kind of operation, they are, in fact, from an abstract standpoint, the same group, because this function that connects the two of them is an isomorphism. So there's some examples. Now let's take in the next video and look at how it is that isomorphisms associate elements of one group to elements of another group that have all of the same properties that we would want them to have.